Okay, I think uh, I can start. Uh, so hi everybody, thanks for coming to my talk about uh, app data and uh, evolution of uh, app data in embedded Linux and uh, Internet of Things world. Uh, just a couple of words uh, about me. Uh, I'm a freelance uh, embedded developer. I'm uh, a maintainer for an XP IMAX uh, processor for the U-boot uh, bootloader. And uh, I am uh, author and maintainer for the SW update, which is one of the uh, open source projects uh, as an uh, update agent. So first of all, uh, if you have checked the title, I put uh, the OTA, so over the air in parentheses, and uh, I want to explain why, because uh, uh, really everybody talk, uh, speak about uh, uh, over the air update, uh, and uh, uh, I want to uh, explain uh, who we should uh, really thank for that, uh, because uh, when uh, someone, uh, a customer, call me and uh, want to know about uh, something about the SW update, he asked me, uh, but it's uh, over the air, because uh, over the air is like uh, the keyboard. But uh, really, this is not uh, a feature of an update, because uh, uh, most other features are part of uh, an agent, but uh, over the air is not uh, uh, what we have data do. If uh, we have to think, thank someone, we have to thank uh, who provide the hardware, so the chip manufacturers, uh, all people who dry, uh, write uh, drivers in the kernel, and uh, the whole infrastructure to make uh, this possible. So because at the end, uh, this uh, makes possible to have uh, an IP address in our system. And what uh, SW update does and what all update agents uh, do is just one simple thing, so very open socket. So using uh, in the naming as over the year update or just update, is not uh, a feature of uh, uh, an update itself. So it's more or less uh, a marketing name. So if this is a marketing name, I have found uh, a new one for uh, the next one. So SW update, I can say, is also a UTW update because uh, it's an uh, underwater update. It's put on this kind of device. This is a Underwater uh, drone uh, is not uh, to play, it's uh, to measure the quality of uh, uh, water in the seas. Uh, I confess I have no idea if uh, they try to update the system when the drone is under the water. But uh, in any case, it's also uh, uh, something to say that uh, over the air is not uh, a really feature for an update. Feature for update is something as, for example, if we are talking about a limited bandwidth, a very important feature is if the update is able to resume a broken connection. I have had a project where the product was sold in countries where there was just a GSM network and also unstable network. So uh, the update can take a very long time but it's very important that a broken connection does not make that the update is started from the beginning, else the update has no chance to come to the end. Uh, or for example, Delta updates to reduce the size of the uh, downloaded uh, software. Uh, SW update has recently a RDIF handle, which is based on lib async. Uh, of course, it's not a solution for every case because with a Libra sync, you can get uh, a small delta if uh, the difference are, uh, are not a lot. If you, for example, wanted to uh, make a delta with two different versions of Yotto, uh, you get a delta that is much bigger than the original one. Or to get a better compression. Or, of course, uh, in a feature for an update agent uh, are a lot of security features like uh, sign image, uh, encryption, uh, many others, uh, uh, no downgrading, uh, uh, 
Also, it's important uh, if uh, the update uh, has uh, uh, survived the audit uh, from some uh, security companies. It's difficult uh, to get uh, because uh, really the uh, security companies uh, uh, make an audit on the product, not uh, on uh, the single uh, piece of software. But uh, in any case, when uh, I, I get uh, the result, I get the uh, the reports from these uh, companies, I could at least fix uh, some security leaks that were found. Uh, an important thing, so something was changed the last time, uh, companies uh, now are aware that they have to uh, update their system. So uh, they don't ask anymore why we have to update and they discover uh, that they have a lot of software on their board. So it's not uh, anymore to say, okay, I have just uh, kernel, UTFS, and so on. Of course, they have also, but uh, there's a lot of other software that needs to be updated too. Uh, first of all, uh, of course, the main software, uh, kernel, UTFS, uh, put on uh, an embedded device uh, like an end, uh, on a UB volume, uh, MMC, or whatever. But uh, uh, we can have uh, even uh, a different storage, for example, a small SPI storage where there's a uh, the bootloader, there can be a rescue system, there could be some other software, and the updater must be able to update uh, uh, this device as well. Or, uh, uh, some other storage like EPOM to store data, calibration data, whatever. Uh, very important thing is uh, how to update uh, an FPGA. Uh, really, uh, currently my preferred way is uh, to use an FPGA manager because the FPGA manager from both Altera and Silinx uh, have found their way into kernel mainline but there's, uh, this means that uh, really the bitstream is part of the rootfs and uh, is uh, downloaded uh, into the FPGA when uh, the application starts or when the system boots. But there are cases where this is not possible. For example, uh, if we need the FPGA at boot time before Linux starts. In this case, the FPGA is connected to a small device in many cases, uh, an SPI device. If you know the Xilinx uh, as uh, a golden image and can boot data from SPI flash. But uh, it's also an important thing, and you know, an important part of software, and uh, the updater should be able in some way to connect to the SPI flash and to update the stream as well. Uh, another uh, possible uh, sto uh, software on the system uh, is uh, if uh, there is uh, a microcontroller on the board, uh, for example, to do some uh, real-time part of the whole software, um, microcontrollers are often connected to the main processor via UART or via SPI, and the updater must update the, the firmware as well. In uh, SW update, there is currently just one uh, handler to make, uh, to update uh, a, a microcontroller. Uh, there are some other uh, cases. Uh, they are not uh, published, they are not in the repo, because uh, um, many customers are using uh, the Lua, so SDP data as a Lua interpreter, and they use Lua to provide a handler and to update their own microcontroller. And Uh, not only uh, it's a thing of uh, just an update, uh, but uh, also other projects uh, have found that they need uh, someone to uh, update their, their, their stuff. Uh, the Civil Infrastructure uh, Platform, uh, CIP, is uh, a project under the umbrella of the Linux Foundation and has the goal to provide a very, very long-term support platform. For example, for kernel, they plan to have 10 years support. And of course, if they upgrade their stuff, they need some way to, to make an upgrade. So they have chosen an, uh, an update agent, we made the comparison, 
and they chosen uh, SW update as an update agent. I don't want to, to say uh, which are the good point uh, why they choose uh, SW update, but just the bad points because the bad points is something uh, that can be solved uh, in the future. Uh, this is a slide uh, I copied uh, as it is uh, from the uh, CIP project. Uh, you find uh, at the uh, bottom uh, there's the link, uh, and there are also some slides uh, regarding the comparison with other updates. They say about a study update, uh, how to manage updates uh, from version one to version five. Uh, it's quite uh, critical. Uh, really, what they meant uh, is they want to have a Delta update that work with any kind of version. Uh, as I said, uh, STB update has a LibreSync, but uh, uh, with LibreSync is uh, possible or realize a small Delta just uh, if the differences are uh, small. Uh, the second uh, bad point is related to the U-Boot library that is linked uh, together with SW update and uh, uh, really, this is not uh, an issue in SDW update, but it's an issue in any project uh, where there is uh, the U boot bootloader and uh, you want to change the environment. The thing is, uh, uh, mostly nowadays, uh, the initial environment uh, of U boot is linked together with U boot because uh, uh, many find uh, very simple, they install just the bootloader and system boots without setting uh, an environment. This has uh, the drawback that when uh, the system is up, you are in user space, any uh, system or any program that wants to change the environment has no idea which is the initial environment. Uh, should search inside the flash where your boot is, but uh, of course it's, uh, it's a hack because uh, any different uh, device has a different uh, start address. And the, uh, the way was done uh, uh, until now is uh, to try to synchronize uh, the U-Boot and U-Boot library. The U-Boot library in Yotto is the U-Boot FW utils and they must be uh, compiled with the same commit, same version, and for the same machine to be consistent. Uh, you understand it's very simple that uh, uh, they get out of sync. It's enough uh, you have uh, your BSP in, uh, in another layer with just a U-boot. You take uh, the U-boot uh, utilities from uh, Pocky, and you have a mismatch, and when you use uh, the FW September in uh, in uh, user space, uh, this can break uh, your environment and your board maybe does not boot anymore. But this was solved uh, with another library. This library is uh, independent from the hardware. It takes uh, a configuration file as most uh, application uh, on uh, Linux distribution. And uh, uh, with it, I can say that uh, the second issue is uh, solved. So we, we are uh, seen in uh, many cases, in many presentations about uh, the update of a device. Uh, what about uh, update of a system, of a whole system? I show you a real case. So I call uh, uh, an update in the internet of big things because this is very huge. You have to uh, imagine this one is an engine, an engine for ships ships, cargo, so something very huge. And uh, each device, there are more as uh, what I put on the slide, each device uh, uh, control just a part of engine. There's many of them, there's a token ring, uh, at the end there's an IP address, so uh, uh, in this uh, private network. Uh, I drop also a middle controller where, that uh, are using the project, uh, the communication with uh, the reward uh, is done with a uh, gateway, two gateways to have uh, redundancy, and these are connected to the network. The outside, so the operator just see, uh, sees one device. So this is just one engine and just one device. So when uh, an update is coming, he wants to update 
this whole device in one shot. So there's uh, many requirements from the, from the customer because uh, uh, they say, okay, we have the same images for all devices. Uh, the gateway has a different hardware, but there's a hardware detection to understand which service will be run or not. The, uh, the, when uh, the whole network is updated, uh, the software to be uh, downloaded should be not, uh, uh, let's say, much bigger as the original pushed in the single device. Uh, software must be streamed, so uh, the device controller has no place uh, to uh, make uh, some uh, temporary storage. And uh, of course, uh, this in, implies that uh, uh, all devices must be updated in, uh, updated in parallel. And uh, uh, they, they think that uh, uh, the updater uh, is just a building block. So they say, I need a build, uh, an update, this must do the whole work. So there should be no dependencies uh, with the uh, application. So the application does not inform the update that, uh, uh, or the, how many devices in the network, the update must discover uh, the uh, device connected to the network. And uh, uh, most important thing, it must update all the devices, and just in case all devices were uh, successfully updated, it can set that the network update was successful and initiate a network restart. So all devices are restarted at the same time with a new version. Uh, mainly for development, uh, they want also to have a single update. So, uh, it should be still possible to go to the single device, to just to one of these device controller, and to make a single update. This was not enough because uh, uh, think about uh, the, the ship is uh, over the seas. Of course, nobody wanted to start an update, but uh, uh, let's see, something gets broken. So a device controller gets broken, uh, now is coming a mechanic, so not an engineer. He can uh, replace the broken device with a new one, but uh, you know uh, what happened with a spare part, so which is the release uh, on uh, a spare part. I will say uh, it's a random device, a random release. So it's a, in the best case, it's the current release when the device was manufactured. But uh, surely it's not the same release on the rest of the network. And uh, uh, as a requirement, uh, there's just one version because there can be compatibility problem. So the device must run the same version. So in some way, the updater must understand this and must install the same version that is running on the rest of the controllers. Uh, this, of course, is not possible if uh, the software is not uh, stored somewhere. We have no network, nothing. Uh, on the device controller, it was not possible, but uh, fortunately, there is space enough on the gateway. So the gateway could, uh, and is uh, planned, to uh, store the incoming software that uh, should be then installed on the single devices. So I started to split because the, you see the update should work in different way, in very different way. Uh, I split in a service because then this uh, uh, map into system D uh, services. I have uh, uh, just a SW update service, this is the user update, so it's the update of a single device. When I have a system update, this is running just on the gateway, and this is responsible to forward and to install uh, all software on all devices. For the replacement, hardware replacement, I added a pull update. This is responsible to check the version, to check the network version, and uh, if necessary, to install the correct release. 
So starting with an uh, update of a single device. This is uh, what is in uh, SW update. SW update has uh, a meta description. Uh, with this is called a uh, SW description. And uh, with it, uh, it's possible to describe for each artifact uh, how to install it uh, on the device. So this is a, a simplified version that you see there as, uh, for the production. Uh, it uses uh, two copies, so there's uh, the running copy and the standby copy. Uh, on the project, there is also a rescue if something is going wrong. In any case, uh, uh, this description uh, can uh, tell to a single uh, updater uh, how the software must be installed on the single device. Uh, SW update then runs on the single device with an integrated uh, web server. And uh, uh, in this way, it's possible to push uh, a new software to the, to the device. Now a way is, uh, from a single device, how to uh, push on all devices. And uh, I find this way, so uh, particularly on the left, uh, you see this is the, uh, the update package, so SWU in, a, in SW update, uh, for the single device. On the right, uh, it's uh, a compound image. This has uh, payload just uh, the uh, SWU of a single device, but it has uh, a new description because we want uh, to install uh, this payload in a different way. We have to forward to all devices. And the description is something like this. So at the beginning, uh, there's uh, uh, the name, the gateway controller, so this means, uh, because it was another requirement, uh, the image for the compound cannot be installed on a single device. So if uh, this is uh, tried, then there's a uh, hardware compatibility check and uh, the update is rejected. Then on the images, you see this uh, if the name is the SWU, so the update package for a single device. And uh, there's uh, a handler. Handler is uh, the way in SW update to install some software. It's a new type. Uh, a type is uh, a forwarder. This handler makes two things. So it takes a list of URL and these uh, properties. And for each of them, make a connection to the web server running on the device. Uh, the web server has two interfaces as a REST API, with the REST API is possible to push an image, and as a WebSocket interface. With a WebSocket interface, it's possible to retrieve data from the update running on the remote device. So it's possible to uh, know uh, how many steps uh, are running, uh, which percentage, and uh, the, the most important thing is the update was successful or not. This was not enough because then uh, we need a detection of a topology because when we build uh, in Yotto, uh, this is uh, empty because we don't know how many devices are in the network. There's an engine with different number of controllers. Uh, there's a hook in the description. When the hook is hit, then a Lua script is running this uh, does uh, uh, nothing more as try to ping all devices in the network and then fill this uh, properties field. So when uh, this uh, handler is running, it has a list uh, with uh, all devices belonging to the network and which device must be updated. So this is, as, is running because there is also a chicken uh, uh, egg problem because the gateway must install all devices in the network, but more, must install also the software on itself. And this was solved uh, using allowed, allowing it to have uh, two instances of uh, SW update on the same devices. And the first one is uh, the gateway, so the uh, manager, the compound uh, image. The other one is exactly as the other one on the single device. 
and the only thing this uh, has the possibility to uh, provide uh, and to output of incoming stream on someone on something some place on the on the file system this is used later for the pull update uh, so uh, at this moment so when an update is coming the updater here so the SWU for water make the two connection and uh, with a WebSocket connection, we can retrieve uh, if the update on all devices uh, was successful. Now we need uh, a decision. And decision is done with uh, an external process, a uh, start controller, the SW update, so the, let's say the red instance, the gateway instance, uh, forward all information regarding update to the restart controller. The restart controller gets the list of the devices and uh, uh, get uh, if uh, uh, the update, the network update was successful. If this is the case, it starts uh, to make, uh, uh, so uh, uh, initiate a connection to all of the devices and uh, with the rest of the API send a reboot command. What, so uh, um, we, with this, uh, we, we have solved uh, the, the, the net update of the system update. What happens uh, when we replace the hardware? When we replace the hardware, the updater should work uh, in uh, another way. So uh, first of all, uh, should check if there is a gateway, should check if there is a SWU, so an update package, Download the first kilobytes because in the first kilobytes there is a meta description. You can check the meta description and, and can extract the version. If the version is the same as the running version, then skip the rest. If not, then first download everything and run SW update in driver mode. So that means without install anything, this is necessary because if uh, a previous update was interrupted, uh, you have on the gateway a corrupted file. So running in driver mode, you know, if it uh, uh, works, that uh, an update will be successful, and if it is, then starts uh, and uh, update uh, from the gateway. Uh, customer was happy, and they say, okay, but uh, I can use also to send the configuration. So not only the software, but even configuration a bunch of files, a lot of files, and uh, of course, uh, this can be done exactly in the same way. The only thing is uh, that uh, at this point, uh, uh, the, the update, so SW update should know already at the beginning if uh, uh, where to store the file. Uh, we should not overwrite the file used for software. So we have a file for software and one for configuration. Uh, this uh, required to add a pipeline to the, to the whole process because uh, the first part of the stream is then passed, is verified with a public key, and uh, a output parameter is checked, and this gives uh, the output file where the file must be stored. Uh, you see this is quite different because now we have a tarball, uh, is a, uh, an archive, a compress, and uh, uh, so for the device it's different, for the compound it's exactly the same. And in this way we can also install a configuration and not only the software. Uh, <coughs> as we see, there are different ways to uh, where the, an update can work. Another use case is uh, uh, during a uh, factory. So uh, let's say uh, to production and first install of software on the devices. This is also a real case. So let's say we have a manufacturer and they decide to make the hardware assembly, not uh, uh, himself, but uh, in outsourcing to another company in another country where it's cheaper. Guess which one? And uh, um, 
but uh, the manufacturer don't, doesn't want to provide everything. So it doesn't want to provide, for example, private keys or some other important stuff. They want to make a functional test uh, themselves, but uh, uh, not the, the assembly of the device. So device is assembly and just a rescue system is installed on the device. Then the devices are sent back to the manufacturer and the manufacturer just put all devices in its own factory network. Uh, the updater, so SW data starts and the knows, can check, I am now in factory mode. And when in factory mode, you look for a fixed IP address, uh, search for the software, install the software, after installation, switch the device in production mode. And when in production mode, uh, it works uh, in a very different way. For example, the update uh, work uh, and uh, is a retriever from uh, a backend server, like a hookbit. So we, I can say the update uh, work in different way uh, regarding the life, uh, uh, the different uh, time of life uh, of your device. The device is born and then they are just uh, a rescue uh, the device grown up, it becomes a product, and then the, the, the updater is also put in grown mode and uh, will uh, uh, work and update in a very different way. Uh, I just put as reference, it's not a feature of the updater in many cases, uh, the devices are not connected directly to the network, but there's a gateway in the between. It's not a feature for the update because at least in my experience, the software for the device is just put on the root FS and device itself uh, get from the gateway maybe in another way, like with uh, MQTT or some proprietary protocol. Another uh, thing I uh, was changed in the VAP data is uh, like a, that the VAP data is uh, unaware about which server is used. So, uh, for example, I, I mean which backend server is used. At the beginning, SW update was uh, um, compatible just with a hookbit. Uh, I get in, in, in another project where there's a, a proprietary server that uses a very different interface, really they misuse the HTTP error code to uh, provide if an update is available or not. Uh, in any case, the code in SW data was uh, changed to make uh, an API for the single uh, uh, connector for the, for the server, and it's possible to uh, have in future more servers, so more connectors connected to different servers. Uh, this on the left is uh, mainly the, the client for to, uh, to, the, to the standard server, and they communicate with the main task of the update via, via an IPC. So this make uh, very generic and uh, can uh, be used also to provide the privileged separation because uh, this process runs uh, with different rights as the main process. The main process generally runs uh, with uh, root rights because it has to install uh, into the hardware. Uh, it's not enough. I had also uh, many cases where a custom protocol uh, must be used. So uh, custom says, uh, okay, uh, it's uh, nice. There's uh, this backend server. There's uh, uh, the protocol is at HTTPS. It's also nice, but uh, there's already a well-defined standard. We have to apply this standard. We cannot change. Or for example, uh, it, uh, the home project has already provided a download method and they, the project is uh, finished or it's an uh, old project and they don't want to change just because there's another solution. Also for compatibility reason. 
uh, they have a previous generation of a device working in, a, in such a way they don't want to change the way the, the customer are using to update the software. This is solved in SW Update with a library. There is a client library. This is now less GPL version 2.1, so it's possible to link proprietary code. The interface to SW Update is exactly the same as in case of the OPI server. So there's the IPC. In this way, it's possible to uh, link directly to a proprietary application and uh, to push uh, then the, the software to the, to the installer. Uh, before I fly to here, I got uh, this request from a customer. Uh, I have no idea if it will be then uh, uh, realized in future. It's just in another interesting way to provide an update they say this comes from uh, a little vehicle charging business. So they say we have already a protocol. The protocol is OCPP and it cannot be changed. And uh, uh, of course, uh, they and many other vendors have many variants, so have many devices. Each device has different uh, way to work. And for each of these way of work, uh, they need a different software. But uh, there's a, a cross vendor server, and uh, uh, on this uh, server, uh, the software for each vendor is uh, stored, but the administration of this backend just uh, can manage update file on vendor basis, not uh, uh, 20 files because uh, they have uh, 20 devices. No, just one file, this belongs to one vendor. So the request here is to have a single file, a single file with all possible uh, software. This is, uh, was already uh, supported by SW Update, but the old software must be downloaded. So SW Update is able to discard the parts that are not interesting. So two different devices, they download the same thing, but uh, one installs some artifacts and the other one some other. Uh, of course, in this case, uh, it's very bad for the device because the whole software must be downloaded and it uh, could be very huge. So the request uh, is that the updater should be able to skip uh, the part that are not necessary for itself and just download what is necessary. It's something I have to think about. <laughs> What is also coming in the last time is uh, um, connected to the continuous uh, integrity is uh, that the software must be installed as soon as possible also in uh, the development. And uh, uh, so the, uh, it's important that all developers run with the same software. If you uh, we have here 10 uh, developers. Uh, I think uh, we find uh, 10 uh, different ways to install software on the device to test. Uh, someone with U-Boot, uh, with TFTP, someone directly with kernel, uh, you know, with Linux, or whatever. Uh, the result in many cases is uh, I, I get an issue. Uh, the other developer, no. Uh, cannot see the same things, and at the end uh, we check uh, and uh, we are running a different version, something uh, is not exactly the same. So if uh, the updater is uh, just part at the beginning uh, of, a, of, a, of a software, of the development phase, then it's possible to install the same uh, uh, software on all devices, and uh, this is also a case, so a, a, a test that is close to what happens in the field. So uh, we can say that uh, an update process uh, is very, very well tested before going to production. So uh, this is uh, exactly the same thing. So many uh, customers are using uh, Jenkins to build the software. Uh, 
Uh, personally, I, I like to use uh, directly BitBake. Uh, Tbota is a test framework uh, um, developed by my uh, friend uh, in Deng's uh, Heiko Schocher. And it's uh, a Python framework uh, with which uh, it's possible to write uh, uh, test cases. Uh, I have a set of test cases uh, to install new software and uh, to perform uh, some basic test to see if uh, the, uh, the new release is working or not. In the past, uh, uh, there's just one or two uh, way to build uh, together with a data, with a SW update. So uh, personally, I use in most projects uh, Yocto, uh, but there are also some projects we build with. Uh, many projects even with uh, Debian, so uh, the update should be uh, buildable in uh, all of these different uh, build systems. Debian is uh, quite recent. Uh, I provided uh, a Debian package and now, uh, because I have not understood at the beginning how Debian works, uh, I, find, uh, I found a mentor to push our directly into the Debian. It was not uh, uh, in time for Buster uh, was uh, taken in experimental for the next release. So as summary, just uh, short, so in my presentation, I want to say that the update does not work always in the same way. So depending on the hardware and depending on the project, there is a different way and also in different uh, a time of the life of a product, the updater must work in a different way. And uh, uh, the updater itself should be also uh, uh, nowadays uh, quite uh, independent uh, from build system, uh, from backend server, or from other part, because uh, people and project uh, uh, should be also able to change some of this part. So I think, uh, I don't know if uh, it's too late. Uh, I'm open now for some questions. Okay, no questions, so thank you very much. <laughs>